on our way here, I said to Unc, I said, why is it that the Hebrews can't recognize the truth? What is it about them that they don't want to accept the truth? Could it be that they've been believing in this lie damn near half of their life that they don't want to see nothing else? And that's the same thing you're talking about. If you give what somebody I'm, some shit to eat, yeah. they've what been eating shit all day. They, the <laughs> Hebrew community, have a very structured, a very organized, and a very functional uh, system. It functions. It doesn't liberate you. Because the Hebrew is the life, except even when he tried to ally himself with the white Jew, he's still a slave, like the rest of us. That's what he won't recognize. What the Hebrew thing seems to do to the psyche is make them think they're above the, what's that movie he says, above the, not above, above the law, above the something else, that's something else. But they, they, they really think that they're above, above the rim. They think they're above the rim when they're really down on the court. Whoa, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on now. Not no judge. Not no priest. No JC. Shalom, shalom, shalom. We're back. We're here at the at Tova Lounge at the Back to School um, book bag giveaway, sponsored by DCB Tova Lounge. Phenomenal women, it's phenomenal Israelite women, and Kyle events. I'm sitting here with my brother, the one and only. I know him as Avdi Lewi, but the world knows him as Zion Lex. How you doing, my brother? Shalom, shalom, Chief. I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. You know, I'm alive. I'm here. We're still pushing forward. It's a beautiful day, beautiful Sunday in Brooklyn. We got the family out here for the book bag giveaway. As you can see, our community actually practices giving back. It's an amazing thing that you guys set up uh, via DCB, and I, I, I want to definitely say congratulations to you and continue doing the good work. All right. Let me put some respect on that man's name. Chief Abdiel Ben Levy. Um, I want to start. I want to get right to it because there's been a lot of things. This is like the like the mid year, a little bit past mid year. Um, I guess um report because we haven't heard from you in a while on this on this platform in this form. Um, first thing, Professor James Ooh. Smalls, Small. Professor Smalls, now. I looked at the I looked at the sit down debate. I don't know what that was, but <sighs> the Kometa community is upset with you because of your treatment or what they say your treatment of Professor Smalls. Can you can you just explain a little bit about what happened between you and Professor Smalls? Absolutely. So uh, Sarnetta. Uh, called my phone about a week prior to me having that sit down with Professor Smalls. And Sarnetta was basically trying to figure out what would be the next best move in terms of having me interact in the conscious community. Uh, he suggested that I go up against Shaka Amos again, to which I said, for what? The first time was enough. My community thoroughly understands that uh, not only did I get past this guy, but we shouldn't even have been in the same building together uh, in terms of the levels of scholarship presented on that day. Uh, with that being said, um, I'm the one that said, let's do it with Professor Smalls. And the brother said to me, uh, well, you know, in order for you to get with Professor Smalls, you know, you still got to deal with people like Polite. So I had to remind him, you know, Polite described me as a hurricane, of which that's things that people don't really want to deal with. Yeah, so... As far as Zion Lex is concerned, what was the question again? Oh, am I ducking him? Or are you running? Or are you ducking? Are you jucking? Are you jiving away from actually stepping in the ring, confronting him, dialoguing with him on a serious topic? Yeah, why not? Uh, why not? Uh, if there was a plague coming into the community right where you at 
Divine Prospect sat down here with him. Hasha sat down with him. Daniela stood up with him. I'm the only person that no matter what, polite avoid like the plague. Let's keep it real. Uh, if there was a plague coming into the community, right? Pack up and you got to go. Pack up and go. If a tsunami was coming into the community, right? Pack up and go. Hurricane, maybe? Pack up and go. Earthquake, if you could. Pack up and go. Okay. So, <laughs> um, and I know him. He's like, yeah, I'm the tsunami. Yeah, 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 right? But in my world, sometimes giving certain people opportunities can be more damaging, right? Not because of their threat or potential, but because of what you have worked so hard to build. The only person that when I challenged Polite live on air, he said out of his own mouth, you want punishment for a whole year. I ain't going to deal with you. But we at a point right now where it's like, you got to deal with me. I'm the elephant in the goddamn room. So he said, damn, you're right. We got to find something. So he called Professor Smalls. We set it up. I spoke with the professor. The professor said to me that he is interested in having a dialogue. Uh, he told me that I can pick and choose the topic and he'll be there. The day of, we're there, we're sitting down. And on my mind was everything that I was watching on Sarnetta's live stream the previous night. You see, Sarnetta had a live stream the previous night which basically stated that Zion Lex was going to be going against Professor Smalls in a debate. Now, as far as I know, between me and Professor Smalls, it was a simple dialogue, but Sarnetta advertised it as it was a debate. So, me knowing Sarnetta and his platform and what he does, I said, whoa, I got to be prepared for an actual debate. Right, right. So I came prepared for a debate. And right. anybody who watched the live stream, you saw Sarnetta said, Professor Smalls is not coming to play with the brother right. Zion Lex. So when I heard that, I said, oh, okay, all is fair in love and war. Right. I guess I can throw some shots. Right. I guess the professor is ready to deal with me on that level. Right. Um, I'm not going to be long, but they always say, you know, we got to be strong. So, um. In any event, this is just a little update for y'all. Tomorrow at 12 o'clock sharp, tomorrow at 12 o'clock sharp, you ready for this? They tell you to be careful what you ask for. Professor James Smalls have agreed to sit down with Zion Lex. Z See, I'm not the one that called this. Don't say Sarnetta. You wrong. Why did you get the elder? So I never ain't got nothing to do with that. I am just the media outlet. That's all I'm, that's all I'm here to do is just give you the information. Professor James Smalls is not coming to play with the young brother. He's going to be respectful. I guarantee you after tomorrow, Zion is going to wish he never called out Professor Smalls to sit down with him. Now, this is what I said to Shaka Upmost, to my brother Reggie, to all the brothers that's not really Reggie, because Reggie holds it down. Reggie comes out and he do what he do. But really, Shaka, playing games all the goddamn time. Professor Smalls wouldn't have to step up and take on a brother like Zion if they was supposed to do what they supposed to do. From the time that the professor started speaking, um, to me, arrogance uh, controlled the direction of his dialogue and his ego. Uh, he said throughout the dialogue initially that he visited Mecca before I was even born. What is the relevance of that? From the perspective of Torah, out of the mouths of babes shall wisdom come forth. So, you know, when it comes to learning and um, experience or knowledge, wisdom and understanding, age is one thing, but practice is a totally different concept and of course you know we're in brooklyn new york you gotta excuse this this is the labor day weekend people we keeping it real this is live right now this is live tv all right so a little intermission but back to your regularly scheduled program i'm not editing that we can't edit that we in brooklyn baby labor day weekend so here we go professor small said to me um during that dialogue that he did not see me as his, as his equal and as such He's not interested in ever having a debate with me. Um, to which, you know, I kind of laughed off to myself inside because I understand that he was speaking more so from the point of view of arrogance and ego and pride. Because, you know, any genuine uh, scholar would love to engage not just the, um, the elders, but even the youth. 
because you know that the youth are going to carry the torch for the next generation so if you're going to give a, a strong dialogue to anybody as an elder you want to reach out to the youth those who carry the torch to the next generation so throughout the course of the dialogue i was let down by it you know and um i'll allow you right now to hone in on anything specific that you may can point out that people were saying was probably an issue because i don't want to seem as if i'm reaching you know i i want you to speak for the people because i know people have reached out to you to tell you uh via the the messages online or via your person to person interaction you know and they gave you some of their thoughts on why they thought what i did was out of box or out of sync well well i have to say brother i've heard from people some people that inbox me from the comedic community even some people from the israelite community that have inboxed me and said, well, man, why did Zion Lex go off on Professor Smalls like that at the end? If he would have just went through with it the way he was handling it, he would have been, he, he would have been declared the winner all the way. But because of what he did, I can't give him any respect. Doesn't Torah say to respect elders? Doesn't Torah say that you have to revere the, 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 um, the hoary head? Um, why did he go out like that? Why did he do that? Why did that happen? Those are some of the things I was I was asked and some of the questions that I wanted to ask you because I wanted to know why did you go at the elder like that? It was it was surprising to me. I seen you go with Seti. I seen you go with young men, but those are people in your age bracket, but an elder Why did you feel that you had to come at an elder like that even after he left? All right, absolutely. So this goes back to a video that I actually tuned into with Professor Smalls uh, engaging Black News 102, saw on the TV live uh, on the streets of Harlem, 125th Street. And uh, during this dialogue, Professor Smalls, who has a prior experience with the Israelite community, during this dialogue, Professor Smalls actually had the nerve uh, to s describe the Israelite way of life as a piece of shit. Do you recall watching this on Son of the yeah, TV ever? Yeah, I do. He was, uh, in the, he was in the vehicle with um, Anka Kent right, and right. Sarnet, I believe, right? They were right, right. They were in Georgia. We're going to have to look at the Hebrew Israelite community differently because I do think we are unfair to that community <laughs> as regards how we don't cheat treat Christians. No, I think it's relative. all the other way around, Professor. No, no, I'm they not talking about them. No, no, no. The blind can't see, brother. <laughs> and the deaf can't hear. And the mute can't talk. And we're wrong to expect the blind to see, Ooh. the deaf to hear, or the mute to talk. Our job is to teach them. Yep. If you meet a blind man, you're supposed to either give him some surgery, get him some glasses, get him a cane or a CNI dog. But you're not supposed to say, why are you bumping into me? You know he's blind. Mm. And so we have to teach differently because if a man was hungry and all you gave him to eat was shit, he'd think that's the best meal he ever had. Facts. Now you roll up there with some sirloin steak, some potatoes and some green beans, you don't want to figure what the hell is wrong with this food. And also, there was a video from 125th Street where Professor Smalls is standing. You know, my memory is no joke. The man is standing with a white collar shirt and a tan, uh, you know, dress pants. And he's having a dialogue with Sarnetta with Brother Sutek on the side of him. And Brother Sutek is engaging him about the Middle Eastern role in African spirituality, if any at all. So, of course, when you speak of that, you have to talk about the Hebraic role. You can't leave us out when you talk about the so-called Middle East which we know was a misnomer because that's all Northeast Africa. Right. Nonetheless, Professor Smalls described our way of life as a piece of shit. There's millions upon millions and millions of people in Africa. And you're talking about a little spot on the map this big. In a world this big. And we're going to take a little spot on the map this big and make it important because the white man made it important. Had not the white man become a Jew and had not the white man become a Christian, we wouldn't even be mentioning that shit. I do, I do. Now, that. I took personal uh, offense to that because Professor Smalls uh, has a great relationship with a lot of the elders of the Israelite community. Some of them still here, but most of them gone. You know, from what I understand, he even gave the eulogy at uh, Rabbi Poinsett. Right. Uh, excuse me, Rabbi Poinsett. And during that eulogy, he put a lot of respect on the Torah, per se. He put great respect not just on the life, the career, and the legacy of Rabbi Poinsett, but he put great respect during that eulogy on the Torah and spoke about it as being a semblance of African spirituality. Right. So to turn around and do a 180 on Son of the TV to me was disingenuous, and I felt that the man had he had it coming. He deserved everything that I gave him. Um, to the people who may have felt that um, me turning up the way I did 
was it necessary you know why you did that and then even saw Netta, you know doing a video a week later and asking the professor uh what does he feel about me doing that when he left i gotta stop the clock for a second okay Sarnetta, and I'm talking to you because we know y'all watch what I do. I'm talking to you, Sarnetta. As the professor is exiting the building, you are behind the camera egging me on to turn it up on the professor. Am I right or am I wrong? Not that another man should ever control the actions of another, but don't act surprised, Sarnetta, or don't act like you weren't aware of what was going on when in fact you were the voice behind the camera asking me to turn it up on the professor. You was the one that asked me before this whole thing even took place to have a dialogue and debate with the professor and you told me, don't hold back. And I said, you sure? Because you know how I give it up. He said, nah, that's Professor Smalls. He could take it. And later on that night, you even said during the live stream, wow. Professor Smalls is not coming to play with Zion Lex. Wow. So I have a question. When all said and done, why is everybody crying? Did not give what was asked for? So, so you're saying, uh, let, me, let me understand this clearly. You're saying that Sarnetta, mm -hmm. Black News 102, That's right. was behind the cameras telling you, turn it up? On Professor Small? Everybody who has ever done an interview with Sarnetta know exactly what I'm talking about. Whenever your interview is too humble, Sarnetta will always look at you from the camera and say, you got to turn up. As the professor is exiting the building, he's pointing at the professor and looking at me and saying, go ahead, turn up. And guess what? I felt the, deserve, the professor actually deserved that turn up because, again, he was very disrespectful to our way of life. Now, granted, from the point of view of Torah, he's an elder. And as such, you would never want to dishonor an elder. So in my own humble um, thinking, I said to myself, let me wait for the man to exit the building. Because when I start to turn up, him being an elder and of great age, I don't want the man's health to affect him. But I'm gonna turn up. By all means necessary, I'm gonna turn up because you was disrespectful to my way of life. I have never been outright disrespectful to the comedic philosophy or spirituality coming out of Kemet. Never. I have defended the Torah in open and public platforms, but I have never disrespected comedic thought per se. I've always given them respect where that respect is due. So for a man like Professor Smalls to put so much disrespect on the Torah, I felt he deserved everything that I gave him once he left and exited the building. And he had an opportunity to redeem himself. He gave me a call. I even played uh, part of the message for you. He gave me a call and asked me why is it that I did what I did. I explained it to him via voicemail and I was hoping for him to respond, but he never responded. I beat the professor so bad during that dialogue that Sh Sarnetta did not want me to exit the building that day. Sarnetta said to me, you cannot leave. We got to get Baba Heru in the building. I said, all right, get him in the building. I said, in fact, we could drive to him. He don't have to come out. He calls Baba Heru. Baba Heru says to him, oh, tell the young man to come. Tell him to come. So I was under the impression that we getting ready to go. I get outside of my car and I'm waiting. 20 minutes are passing. I'm on the phone with you at the same time. And I'm telling you that Sarnetta's playing games. I'm driving around 125th Street Harlem waiting for Sarnetta to give me the word on whether or not we're going to have Professor uh, uh, Baba Heru or we're going to have uh, M. Fudiji defend what Professor Smalls clearly was unable to defend. And let me set the record 100% straight. Let me G-check Professor Smalls for a second. Oh. Oh. Here we go. Oh. Professor Smalls said before the dialogue occurred, Zion Lex, you're not qualified to debate me. I only debate my equals. A couple of minutes passed and the professor went on to say, Zion, you're a scholar of this. I'm no scholar of Kemet. Initially, you said that I'm not qualified to debate you. I am not your equal. Until you tasted some of my scholarship on that couch, which caused you to recant those statements, and not only did you put some respect on the idea of me being a scholar in Torah, but you actually gave up the title of you being a master teacher, because you said I'm no master teacher of the comedic philosophy. You said that I'm into African spirituality with a focus on voodoo.